So hey what's going on everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create this amazing rainy street lamp with the help of 3JS and if you wanted to learn more about 3JS and if you wanted to browse some amazing projects just like this then you should definitely check out the professional 3JS course where you'll be learning more about 3JS and it's a one time payment which means you need to pay once and you can access it forever so I would definitely recommend you to giving it a try. Now let's get back to our workspace. Here I got an actual 3D model which I had downloaded this from the Sketchfab website. Before using this actual 3D model we need to make some changes in this model. At the very first step you need to actually rename this models object into lamp so that we can use this object name in our 3JS scene. Now let's get back to our code. So here I got a basic HTML template and I'm going to be defining the canvas and I'm going to be importing the ES module streams from the npm module and I'll import all the libraries and I'll just set that type to import map and then I'm going to be linking my script.js and I'll just set that type to module and then let's define the basic style.css and now let's head over to the script.js. In this JavaScript implementation we'll utilize various libraries and dependencies to construct a 3D graphics scene with a web browser using 3JS. We'll import several functions and classes from 3JS including the GLTF loader for loading 3D models in the GLTF format, the orbit controls for enabling the users to manipulate the camera and the effect composer render pass and unreal bloom pass classes for post processing the rendered scene. Additionally, we'll import a custom function extend material from an external library as well as a number of other utility functions. We'll also define a set of configuration options for the scene in the sketch config object and predefined configuration in the presets object. Object. Our next step is to establish the camera and lighting, load a 3D lamp model and create a point light for each lamp. It's worth mentioning that we are utilizing simplex noise to create random values for various parameters in the scene. To create a raindrop, we'll utilize a 3 dot cylinder geometry and a custom shader material. The raindrop will be constructed using a cylinder geometry with a base and top DDA set to 1 and the height set to 1. The basic 3 dot mesh lambert material will then be extended with a custom shader material which modifies the raindrop's position and appearance based on the uniform variables such as time, wind direction, strength and light portion. To implement custom shader, we'll utilize GLSL which calculates the position and appearance of each raindrop in a scene and implements matrix transformations such as translation, scale and rotation to position the raindrop in a 3D space. It also includes a simple noise function to add randomness to the raindrop's motion. We'll then initialize and animate the rain in a 3D scene. For this purpose, we'll create an instance of 3 dot instance mesh with the specific variables of rain geometry, rain material and the number of raindrops specified in the config.raindrops. The init rainer function is defined and immediately called which adds the rain object to the scene and sets in certain attributes for the rain particles. A framer function is then defined which updates the properties of the rain particles each time it is called. The framer function takes one argument's props which contains information about the animation state. If the configuration option have changed, the code will update the properties of the rain material including the wind direction, strength and cusp parameters as well as the positions of any point lights in the scene. Finally, we'll calculate a value for wind strength variations based on noise function and updates the value in the rain material. The frame function returned from the init rain function can be utilized to animate the rain effect. To add bloom effect in 3JS, we'll create a function called init bloom, which initializes the bloom post processing effect in a 3JS scene. The function checks if the renderer and the configuration object have been provided. If not, it'll throw an error within a message. Next, we'll retrieve the camera from the scene by checking for the camera property set to true. If the camera is not an instance of 3 dot perspective camera, an error with the message will be thrown. We'll then create an render boss object for rendering the scene and an unreal bloom boss object for applying the bloom effect and an effect effect composer object for composing the different passes. The render pass and the bloom pass are then added to the composer. Finally, we'll define a framer function that updates the bloom effect whenever the configuration object changes. The function updates the renderer's tone mapping and tone mapping exposure properties as well as the resolution, threshold, strength and radius properties of the bloom pass object. The init bloom function returns an object containing the composer and frame properties which can be used to render the scene with the bloom effect. Finally, we'll define an init function to set up and initialize the environment for a scene including the camera, light rain and bloom effect. With these steps completed, the scene should now be working and you should see the amazing light effect. If you are interested in learning more about 3JS and creating 3D graphics in a web browser, consider purchasing a professional 3JS course. The links can be found in the description. With that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.